Hey everybody, I want to prepare this short video just to get you ready for some of the upcoming expectations related to Blackboard Learn and its use in the school district of Waukesha starting in the fall of 2020. So we know that this is a bumped up timeline for our digital uh, communication. And there's a couple of reasons that decision was made. First off, we're not entirely sure what school is going to look like next year, but we do know that there's probably some version of blended learning as some students are going to be maybe available face to face. Some students will be uh, available from home. Ultimately, we need to be as flexible as we can be and blended learning would allow us to do that, putting, play, putting resources in both uh, a virtual space or digital space like Blackboard Learn and also using those face to face with the students in front of us. Also, we know from this spring and our experience with virtual learning that our parents, our staff, and our students are telling us in their feedback surveys on how that went that they're really looking for a streamlined place where resources are housed, so a single place to go to find what you need instead of many emails, many links, trying to keep tabs of all of those together, which really leads us to the idea that we need a single launch pad for parents and guardians and families, but also for students where they can go to get all of their resources in a single place as they need them. We also know this is going to encourage teacher collaboration because if we all use the same set of tools, I no longer have to make something in my space and you make something in yours, we can start to work together and share. So that's just an added ben benefit of using Blackboard Learn in the fall of 2020. So those are some of the things that have driven the decision to speed up the timeline. And so as we think about that timeline, let's lay that out next. So this graphic shows you an overview of the coming expectations and deadlines as far as Blackboard for the fall of 2020. Just to clarify for some of you, kind of the, the key things you have to keep in mind, the dates you need to hit, and really the overall thinking we have as we grow into this. So you can see this outlines fall of 2020, uh, starting in September, and then you see October, November specifically laid out here, and then December uh, through June of 2021 are really um, the end half of that. So let's zoom in just a little bit so we can take a look at each of these pieces. So starting in September, for the September 1st, so basically the beginning of school, here are the things that you would need to be able to do. The teachers need to have a course created using the Blackboard scheduler tool. This is a, a tool that auto enroll students in your course based on uh, your enrollment in Infinite Campus. So if you have an Infinite Campus created course, you would use the Blackboard Scheduler to create that. And then you would import the blank shell template. Uh, we have a generic shell template. We have lots of support videos to get you there, but that's the consistent look that every course will have with the same tabs on the left-hand side so students have a consistent experience from course to course. Because you've used the Blackboard Scheduler, you'd need to enroll your students. Well, that's automatically going to be done for you. So that one you can kind of check off your list as long as you create a course with the Blackboard Scheduler. And then finally, as you think about your building, your admin and your coaches being enrolled in your course so that they can support you as you move forward. That would be the September 1st guidelines. Then by September 15th, if you are in a house system, which uh, for instance, Horning would be, um, you would have a single house course and then inside of that house course, each of the teachers with their individual Blackboard course pages would be uh, linked inside of that. So a student would come to house 6A and their literacy course would be there and their social studies course would be there and their science course would be there. The links would be right in there. Also by September 15th, for any electives, so PE, music, whatever it might be, that those teachers' courses would also be linked into the houses. The idea here is that a teacher only has to really create one Blackboard course, their PE6 course, for instance, but then they can link them into all of the student courses. You also want to, by September 15th, have your resources really in one place. So any of the outside uh, digital workflow tools, if you use Google Classroom, if you use uh, Seesaw, if you use Gizmos, any of the outside resources that you have would be flowing through your Blackboard course and the links would be placed in there. And then finally, by September 15th, you have the ability to add content. That's probably the big one for a lot of teachers who are new to Blackboard is the ability to add content would be fundamentally uh, the challenge for them. That's something we want to start sooner than later as we're working on this. Okay, 
Now we're going to zoom out just a little bit. Those are really the first initial deadlines that we're talking about here. Now let's look at number three. So you can see this is a little bit longer runway here. Here, we're talking about learning how to use some of the various Blackboard tools. You'll be learning about that September, October, and November. And really the idea is, while you don't have to use a discussion board or a blog, as you learn more about the tools there, you begin to uh, decide what you might implement in your course. Also, we're talking about feedback from students as they use the course about the navigation. So you're asking questions in September, October of your students like, how easy is it to find the things that you need? Is there anything I can do to improve the navigation of the course so that you can find things? Do I need better, clearer directions? Those are questions you're asking in September and October. And then really toward the end of October, uh, mid to end of October, beginning of November, you're improving the navigation of the course just to make it easier for them to find things. Now, the question a lot of people are asking is, when do we have to start using Blackboard with students? And we're recommending that you begin that right away at the beginning of the year. Explain to students that you're learning while they're using it, um, that you're going to be asking for their feedback. But really, throughout the year, you're going to want to use Blackboard on a consistent basis. The whole idea is to have a consistent launch pad. And so we're going to start that on day one so that we're, com we're consistent throughout the year and we can build some routines. And finally, let's talk blended learning. Blended learning is the idea that you'll have resources that are available online. Uh, virtually that kids can do on their own, that they can access as they need to. And you're also meeting with them face to face uh, in class. So that's a blended experience. You're literally going to be doing that the entire year, depending on what the format is that looks like. But we want you to see that this is not something that's our primary focus right at the onset. When we start in October and November, we, we get our Blackboard courses up and running in September, but in October and November, December, we start to learn more about how to put our resources online. We get better with navigation. Toward the end of the year, January, February, March, and, and so on, we want you to start focusing a little bit more on Blended and getting better with Blended. It's just a constant improvement. Nobody is expecting you're going to have this down perfectly. Just like we didn't have virtual learning down perfectly when we started, we keep getting better with the grace to fail, grace to try, and then start to experiment toward the end of the year using a little bit different blended techniques as we're moving forward, some things that you can reasonably do to support your students. So that just gives you kind of a rough timeline of when things would be expected. You can see it's continual growth, continual improvement, and hopefully by the fall of 2021, we are better at the beginning of next school year than we are at the beginning of this coming school year. And that's really our goal as we move forward. But we really want to have all of the resources in a single place for the students and their families to find them and also other staff member. So I hope that provides a quick overview of what the Blackboard expectations for the school district of Waukesha in the fall of 2020 will look like. Thanks for tuning in.